Hey, so today we will talk about what is throttling and what is debouncing. Now these are some two complicated concepts which are sound very similar actually, but they are a little different. So let us understand why do we actually need throttling and debouncing. So let us say we have a search result. Uh, for example, we have our trusted google.com. So every time a person, let's say I'm trying to get search results for based on what I'm typing. Every time I write something, if it has to keep searching on every single letter I type, let's say I search, if I type Apple, the first, if it shoots an API call like for A, AP, APP, APPL, APPLE, it's a lot of API calls to shoot at a single time and it is not always very efficient unless you're servers are able to handle it. So therefore it is makes sense for you to actually wait until the person has stopped typing and then you shoot an API call in the last. So if he's typing at the moment you would not shoot calls. Only when he's finished typing you would shoot a call or let the function run for your API. So in Google's case they actually shoot an API call for every letter we do but their servers are also very fast and capable of handling it. So that's a different story. Let me show you an example where I found of it being very inefficient. So this is one website I use and I happen to be trying to enter some information someday on this. So let me try to enter something like Apple or something. So here you can see it has shot an API call for A AP, ABP and so on and it is still not yet received the response. In fact for the last thing I have written AP, the four letter one, it has still not yet received a call. After 16 seconds it has given me a response. Now this is very inefficient and is not something you should do especially when your database is slow and taking so long to respond. Moreover when I have written four letters the previous three results don't no longer matter to me since this is the most relevant and the search results are going to be more appropriate to what I'm searching. So therefore it makes sense to you can to actually skip these first three when the person is typing and just load the last one. So let us see how do we do this. Now just in case you're still not clear about what is the difference between throttling and debouncing, let us just see this particular article. Now the reason I really like this article is because this person has given a very concise definition and he also has given a very useful visual. So let us see the visual first. So let us say I'm on this website and I'm moving my mouse here. So on the regular as you can see here, every time I'm moving my mouse, the event is, is going to fire an event. For example, to my handle change or on change functions or whatever. Now when I stop moving my mouse, let's say for now, again I move it a little, again I stop. The debounce function is called only in after I stop and there's not been any in event for like let's say a, a period of time which I specify. For example, 200 milliseconds or something. So when I stop moving my mouse for a small period of time, like say 200, second, 200 milliseconds, that's when it would fire the event. Whereas in throttle, it limits the number of times it can be called in a specific duration. Let's say I say every 100 milliseconds it's okay to call the uh, event. So as you can see I'm moving my mouse. Even though I'm not stop moving it, it, it keeps calling it every 200 milliseconds over here. And here you can see when I stop, uh, only when I stop moving it that's when it is called. So the, each of these two have their own use cases. So let us just see some code and understand how do we use this in our application. So here I have written a very simple component in React. So I'll just run through some of the code. It's a simple input tag which has an onChange function and it also has a value. Uh, so I'm just storing the whatever I have edited here in my state variable which is called as value. Initially I have just initialized it as an empty string. As in when I type something, I have the event and I'm just setting the state here. And once I set the state, I'm actually trying to call my API, which would reach out to my backend and fetch the data based on my search query. So here I've written the uh, 
ES6 ES6 function. The only thing is I've wrapped my normal ES6 function with a debounce uh, debounce function and also passing it as a second argument, which is the time I wanted to wait for. For example, 500 milliseconds. It should wait before it the person stops typing and then it calls the API or whatever my function is here. So here inside this function is really simple. I have taken my value from the state and I'm just doing an API call. And if the data comes, I'm just returning the data. Here is just a random URL I've written. It doesn't really work, but just to show you, if I open my network tab, okay. So let's say I type uh, Apple or something. You see, only once it has sent that API call for an Apple. Let's say I type Apple juice or something. I stop after right after a few seconds. Again, I type juice after a little time and stop. So you can see it has shot three API calls. And I think this is really at least a little more efficient than the previous solution wherein I shoot an API call every single time he enters a letter. So this is one of the ways to use debounce. So the way I've used debounce is I've uh, installed a package called Lodash. You can install it using npm install or yarn install Lodash. And I've imported it into my component. I imported the debounce function. I just wrapped my normal function inside of this. And as you can see, it is running this particular function every 500 milliseconds or whatever. So I can change the duration to whatever I like. So let us say I want that the duration between when I stop typing and it calling my function should be let's say one second or something. So this is a millisecond, so thousand uh, milliseconds is one second. So let's say I write Apple and I stop. You see after one second it has done. I can even make it, if I have really uh, fast server, I can make it like 200 milliseconds or something. So see, even though I have, I was a little slow on typing there, it has shot an API call for this. So I think about 500 milliseconds is decent enough. There are other things also we can do to make this a little more performance. So you can say I at least have three letters written inside here, but that's a different, that's for another day. This is just to show you the difference and how to use debounce. Let's also try to import throttle to just see how that works. So it's really simple, just replace debounce with throttle. And as you can see, if I write uh, apple juice, so you see every 200, every 500 milliseconds, it has shot an API call. So there are different use cases in which you may need to use throttle. This is just how to implement it inside the existing code that I have. But in this code, it's makes, it makes more sense to use debounce. There are a few cases in which you can use uh, throttle. For example, I saw an interesting article here wherein he says that once you're scrolling down, you want to keep a tab of where is he reached on the page because let's say it's an infinite scrolling page. So even though he's not yet stopped scrolling, as and when he reaches a particular position on the page, you want to load some new, new posts or like you know in Twitter you have infinite scrolling so as and when he's reaching up almost the bottom of the page you will make an API call to get more uh, posts and tweets and all that stuff and same way for different websites like 9gag.com and reddit or all these uh, everyday websites which we tend to use so that's a little brief tutorial about what is debouncing and throttling and I hope that we all write efficient code and it was useful for all of y'all until next time, have a good day.